Welcome to an introduction to educational research. Today's video deals with levels of measurement or measurement scales. If we're conducting research, generally we are collecting some type of data on different kinds of variables. And so that means we may be gathering numbers. But not all numbers are the same. And to be intelligent and uh, researchers and producers of research and to be able to read and understand it, we need to be aware of these differences in how numbers are collected. So that's what this uh, video is going to be about. But let's just look at some definitions here for a minute. And I'll walk you through this. So measurement, <clears throat> the act of measurement is assigning numbers to things according to a set of rules. And we're going to be talking today about four different sets of rules or four different measurement scales that are used to assign numbers. But before we do that, let's take a look at the big picture. Now, the level of measurement, the level of measurement or the scale of measurement refers to the relationship among values that are assigned to attributes for a variable. Now that's a mouthful, but let's just take a look at this diagram. The, re <coughs> the level of measurement refers to the relationship, notice down here relationship, among the values, and here are certain values, that are assigned to the attributes, and here are the attributes of the variable under investigation. So here the variable is party, political party affiliation. And we've divided it arbitrarily uh, into Republican, Independent, and Democrat. So the attributes of party affiliation for this particular example are Republican, Independent, or Democrat. And we could have had Libertarian, and we could have had Green Party. We could have had a bunch of at different attributes, but just for the sake of an example. So we have the attributes now. The variable is divided into the attributes. <coughs> Pardon me. And now values are assigned. Values are assigned to the attributes. So if the person is a Republican, a one is put by their name. If they're an independent, a two is put by their name. If they're a Democrat, three is put. And so if we went through a hundred people we'd wind up with X amount of Republicans, X amount of Independents, and X amount of Democrats. Now the relationship here in this example, there is no relationship. These are not numbers that can be compared. Republicans are not better than Independents, and Independents are not better than Democrats or whatever. These are just categories or names. But again, the important point is <clears throat> when we're at the level of measurement refers to a relationship about values that have been assigned to the attributes of the variable under study. So here, political affiliation is under study. We've broken it into three attributes. Values are assigned to it, and we examine the relationship. And again, here, there is no relationship. Well, that's an attempt to sort of give you a big picture, but now let's take a look at what we have here. Okay, so here is an overview of scales of measurement, and the scales of measurement are right in the middle here. So there's a nominal scale, an ordinal scale, an interval scale, and a ratio scale, and I'll go, go through this with you. So each scale or level of measurement has its own set of rules for assigning numbers to variable attributes. So different types of variables <coughs> may be measured differently. And the scale or level of measurement determines the type and amount of information available to us. So each one of these scales, <coughs> the nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio, determines the type of information that's available to us. These are in order. The nominal scale is the weakest, the least amount of, of information. 
Ordinal scale is a little stronger than the nominal. Interval is a stronger, and then ratio is the strongest, the most information we get out of it. The four scales or levels from the least to the most informative are, as I said, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. So let's take a look at this whole diagram. We have data that's being collected. And basically, it breaks down into two types. There is data that is used just to count, just to counting. And these two types that are under the counting types of data are nominal and ordinal. And then there is data that actually takes measurements of things. And the two types of scales of measurement under the measurement one are interval and ratio. The counting or nominal and ordinal scales of measurement are called categorical because basically they just put things into categories. Under the measurement types of data, the interval and ratio scales are numerical because they collect numerical data. And there are two types of numerical data. There is discrete numerical data, and that is just whole numbers. That's just whole numbers. And then there's continuous numerical data, and that is all the whole numbers and all of the fractional numbers. So that's an infinite amount. So this is sort of the big picture. We have data. It breaks down into two major categories, data that we're, scales that we use that just count and scales that we use that measure. The counting scales are the nominal, which is the least informative, and ordinal. And they are referred to as categorical because they put things in categories. The measurement types of data, where they actually measuring, are interval, <coughs> pardon me, and ratio. And this is numerical data. And they break down into discrete, which is just pure whole numbers, and continuous, which is whole numbers and all of the fractional numbers in between. The scale or level of measurement used in a research study is important because it determines the appropriate summary or statistical analysis that will be used to examine the variable or variables <coughs> under study and the format of how the analysis will be presented, whether it's in charts or simple frequencies or percent or tables containing means, medians, or statistical test scores. So in reading research and even in conducting your own research, if you're doing a thesis, it's important to know what level or levels of measurement scales you are working with. If you're doing a survey, you, have, you may have you may use all four. You may have questions on the survey that represent all four levels of measurement. Well, now let's take a look at each of them individually. All right, the first scale and the weakest scale that gives us the least information is the nominal scale. You see down here the steps, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. We're working with the nominal here. And it says the attributes only named. The attributes are only named. So the political party that we looked at, that diagram, um, that was nominal data. We were just naming Republican, Independent, or Democrat. Just the name. So, and it's one of the counting variables. Remember, there were data, there were counting and measuring, and counting consisted of nominal and ordinal. And a lot of times, <clears throat> nominal data is referred to as categorical or qualitative. And it places items in categories, in, into names, with no sense of order at all. Examples might be gender, male and female. Well, I realize now that this, that, that variable may be a little more complicated, but just for the sake of example, let's just assume for now it's male or female. So it puts... You're either in one category or the other. Uh, favorite color, let's say. Those would be categories. Types of dogs. 
people would, I like a Kali, I like a Boxes. You would count up all of that. You would not, you would not think of um, adding up all the different counts of types of dogs and then dividing by how many types of dogs and coming up with a mean type of dog. That would make no sense. Same with mean color or mean gender. Political affiliation, same thing. They're just names, categories, or pigeonholes that it's put into. So obviously there are no um, multiplication or division, or you don't report things in terms of means or average values. In fact, dummary, uh, data summary usually is in the form of frequencies or percents. So you might have something like this if you had 12 people and you surveyed what's your favorite color. Well, 40% wanted blue, 20% yellow, 10% green, 50%. So that's one way that you would present nominal data. Another very common way of representing it is in a bar chart also. So very simple, very simple data analysis. Again, it just names things and puts things in categories. You, the numbers on uh, athletes' jerseys, that's nominal data. The numbers have no meaning. You wouldn't add up all the numbers and divide by the number of players to get a mean uh, number for a player. That would make no sense. Well, the second level of data is ordinal. And like nominal data, it's one of the two counting variable data. It names, puts things in categories, just like the nominal data does, but it ranks, and the order is meaningful. The order is meaningful. So here we have first, second, and third. This is ordinal data. Uh, a lot of times, uh, especially in psychology, research dealing in psychology, where they do satisfaction surveys and things like that, <clears throat> where you have a scale of strongly agree, agree, disagree, strongly disagree, <coughs> pardon me, and numbers would be assigned. If it's strongly agree, this might be a one, agree is two, three, and four. If you filled out um, evaluations at the end of your coursework, you've sort of encountered things like this. And this is ordinal data. It, it names things just like no, uh, nominal, but it rank orders and the order is meaningful. However, the values have, the values do have order, but the intervals between the scales are not equal. So <clears throat> here's a race. First, finished first, finished second, finished third. However, second place was very close to first place, whereas third place was far behind. So the intervals between the data points in ordinal data are not necessarily equal. And again, like nominal data, since it's one of the two counting types of data, it can be summarized as a frequency, percent, and generally the mode is the uh, Statistic of central tendency, the mode being the most, the number that appears the most. Uh, there is some controversy about, among statisticians, about calculating a mean score from, uh, let's say, a survey question like this, which is ordinal. And the controversy has gone on for quite a while. Uh, if you come across research that does that, Interpret it with a little bit of caution. I think the general consensus is that it is legitimate if you calculate mean scores uh, using ordinal data. And visually, this is usually displayed in bar charts and frequencies and percents also. Now, moving up the scale, we're going to interval. An interval is the first of the measurements, of the measurement categories. So it's under the measurements. It, just like nominal data, it names categories. The order is meaningful. And the intervals between the numbers are assumed equal and have the same interpretation. 
It's sometimes referred to as scaled or quantitative data. And again, it can be discrete, can be a discrete, which are whole numbers, or continuous, which are fractional numbers. The one thing about interval data that makes it a little difficult to interpret is it has an arbitrary zero point. Let's take an IQ score. An IQ score is interval data because it has an arbitrary zero point. In fact, I think the lowest score you can get on an IQ test is like 40. And <clears throat> there is no zero IQ. There is no absolute non-intelligence. So the zero point is arbitrary. So it is interval in nature. So what that means is you cannot say that a person who has an IQ of 100 is twice as smart as a person who has an IQ of 50. You can't make ratio comparisons because of the arbitrary zero point. Temperature is a very good example. Our Fahrenheit and Celsius scales, they are arbitrary zero points. The zero in the Fahrenheit scale does not mean the absence of all molecular motion so that there's no heat. There is no concept of no heat. Actually, I think there is a scale, I don't know if it's the Kelvin or one, that <coughs> has a theoretical uh, zero point where all molecular motion stops and there is no heat. But I think that's theoretical. But anyway, that's, we don't need to get into that. The thing about the interval scale is it's the second most <clears throat> in, uh, powerful form of measurement scale, but it has an arbitrary zero point. So summary measures are the standard um, descriptive statistics, like the median, the mean, standard deviation. Usually you'll see box plots or bar graphs, his histograms, and if it's a study over time, you'll see timeline graphs. But you, the key thing is you can make no ratio comparisons. You cannot say twice as or more than, things like that. You can say more than, I'm sorry. You can't say twice as much. And let's look at the most informative, and that is the ratio scale. It has all the properties of the nominal, ordinal, and interval scale, plus it has a true zero point. So examples are like weight and height and brainwave activity, speed. And you can make ratio comparisons because there is a concept of no speed, zero speed. And if someone is going 50 miles an hour and someone is going 100 miles an hour, you can say the person going 100 miles an hour is going twice as fast as the person going 50 miles an hour. So you can make ratio comparisons. So it is the most informative level, and you'll, this diagram shows it fairly nicely. Nominal is here, that just names categories. And, and ordinal has all of the characteristics of the nominal. And then interval encompasses the nominal and the ordinal, but ratio includes them all. Rarely in the social sciences that we read and we will be working with will we see ratio types of data. Rarely. Well, I shouldn't say rarely, because if you're collecting things like student age or student weight, if it were PE class or something like that, that would be ratio data. But generally, we are working with interval or ordinal data or even nominal. Well, those are the four measurement scales. And again, the reason that they're important is if you're doing research, you need to know what measurement scales you're working with so you'll be able to select the appropriate data analysis and data presentation. And when you're reading, you want to be aware of what levels of measurement that the researchers are working with in their research. Well, let's take a look at applying some skills here. Well, this is just a, re sorry, this is a review, a review. Data, we have data, and we have four measurement scales. Two of them are considered counting, 
purely counting, and two of them are actually doing measurement. The nominal and ordinal, which are the two weaker ones, categorical, they tend to put things in categories, nominal names things, ordinal names things, but there is also meaning to the order, like first, second, third, and fourth. But there is no equal distance between the order. Then in the measurement, we have interval and ratio. An interval and ratio are almost exactly the same, but interval data lacks a true zero point. So you cannot make ratio comparisons. Both of these, in fact, many times these are, are um, presented as one. They're presented so there would be three levels of measurement, nominal, ordinal, and then interval ratio, and they're, they're combined because they're so similar. And they use numerical data and discrete, which is whole numbers, and continuous, which is fractional numbers. All right, now let's apply your skills. Assume that you are conducting a correlational study to compare student satisfaction ratings concerning their school lunches, their weight, their body mass index, their gender, their socioeconomic class, their IQ, and their class rankings. You will be collecting data on seven variables. Develop a survey that you might use to collect this data, and for each survey item you develop, indicate the type of measurement scale you would use. Create a Word document titled Your Name underscore Scales of Measurement and record your responses and please email it to me at happyj1939 at yahoo.com. Well, thank you very much. We'll see you next time.